Welcome to this course about Claude Code. I'm gonna be going into great detail on how to go from an absolute beginner to a master of this software. Claude is without a doubt the best coding assistant that you will come across. It's extremely powerful. It can be very, very cost effective for a normal build. And you can get away with just paying 17 bucks a month to build most simple websites, which is what we're going to be doing in this course. What really sets Claude Code apart, in my opinion, is its ability to deal with context, the fact that it has sub agents, and just honestly, the fact that it's from one of the best AI companies, Anthropic. Now, Claude Code used to be very, very difficult to install, but it's actually extremely easy to install these days. You can even use it on Windows without using WSL, so you don't even have to worry about that anymore. Now, these are the requirements, guys. If you cannot install Node.js by yourselves, this is probably just going to be beyond you anyway. Just install Node.js, add it to path, get ChatGPT to walk you through that process. You could even get Claude Code or Claude itself to run you through that process right here. It's not difficult. It's a little bit more difficult than the average thing you might do on the computer. But literally, just install Node.js. Literally, just download it. You can curl. If you've got a Mac, you can just press copy here and then just paste that into a terminal. If you're on Windows, just download Node.js. Make sure you add it to path. And then as soon as you can run Node-V inside the terminal and get a response just like this, then you know that Node is installed properly and you should be able to just one-shot install Claude code. Now try all of these commands here, right, for Windows. If it's still not working, click on NPM right here. This, by the way, is just, if you just go on Google and type in Claude installation. It's the first result right here, right? And also I'll leave a link obviously in the description as well. But yeah, if you can't get these to work, right? All of these commands, try NPM. If you still can't get that to work, power up ChatGPT, even the free version, give it all of this information and say, look, please just help me get this installed. That's how I installed it the first way, guys. It is something that you'll have to struggle through a little bit, but it will be worth it in the end, I promise you. Now, if you go on Google and type Claude pricing, you'll find this page right here. This page is what a lot, which is, this confuses a lot of people, right? You can use Claude with the free plan, but I do not believe you can use Claude code with the free plan, right? You do need at least the pro plan, plan which is $17 a month in order to use Claude code, as you can see right here, access Claude code on the web and terminal. This will be enough for playing around with Claude code and starting to learn what you're doing. You only need a max plan if you're doing very, very complicated tasks or massive amounts of data scraping or something like that. Do not just jump into the max plan. I'm telling you, just don't. Use the pro plan, and if it doesn't have enough usage, you can add an API key and use Claude Haiku 4.5, which is extremely cheap and will actually allow you to play around with a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be doing in this course. I would not recommend the max plan for most new users. Once you get used to it, you can think about the max plan. I use the max plan, we pay 200, I think we even pay $600 a month for three max plans. It's worth it in the end, but when you're just starting out, you don't want to burn through money. Start with the pro plan, it's enough for most things on this course. So like I said, to install, all you do is just run one of these commands, right? One of these will work for you. If it doesn't, then um, like I said, power up ChatGPT. So this will install, obviously I've already got it installed, but I'm just showing you the process. I have a Mac, so I just ran brew install, uh, dash dash cask Claude code, and it worked for me. Beautiful. Now, another thing to mention is that when you actually do this, it also installs a Visual Studio Code extension, right? Which I also use. You can see I just opened up Visual Studio Code and it was instantly open. So let's just open up a new one here. You want to make sure that you actually have the Claude Code extension for VS Code. So if you go to extensions here, and I'm just going to update mine because mine uh, needs an update, which is fine, perfectly normal. And then you'll see this little Claude symbol here. If you don't like terminal and if you feel confused by things in the terminal, you can use this in exactly the same way, right? Now, Claude, both in the terminal and also inside Visual Studio Code, works on a very simple principle. Whatever folder you have open, is the folder you are working in, right? So if you want to start a new project, you press open folder, new folder, new project, example, 
right? And then we open this, and now this is Claude's memory, right? Claude is working from this folder. So in order to get this Claude thing to pop up, apparently you need to actually have a file or a folder here, and then this pops up, right? I just made a very, I just made hi.py, I just press plus here, and then hi.py, right? And then you can literally say, for example, make me a Python script that does this, right? And then you write whatever you want it to do. So that's just a quick example of Visual Studio Code. You can do exactly the same thing that we're gonna be doing in this course inside Visual Studio Code. And I will sometimes jump on over to Visual Studio Code as well. So going back to the terminal, because honestly, I prefer the terminal. I think it's better. I just wanna mention a few things to you. So in order to start Claude, all you do is write Claude. But if you do Claude-V and this gives a response, you know that it's set up properly, right? So Claude, learn the difference between being inside Claude, which is this, and being inside your terminal. This is a key thing to learn for beginners. I see people slip up on this all the time. This is extremely important to understand. Now I'm inside the terminal, right? Because you can see, it says Davison, Mac, whatever. As soon as I write Claude, I am inside Claude code. One thing, other thing to mention is you can write clear and that might actually help you understand whether you're in Claude code or in the terminal. Let me just log out here so that I can show you guys what happens when you will write Claude for the first time. You'll be greeted by this setup tutorial. I would recommend dark mode. Like I said before, I would recommend Claude account with subscription, right? And then once you're logged in, you can just press enter, press enter again. And um, you can do either of these things. It doesn't really matter in my opinion. You can do the terminal setup or you could just ignore it. Now, the basics of Claude code, this is where it starts to get interesting. In order to change the behavior of Claude code permanently, you want to write slash memory and go to user memory and change the user memory. So you can see here, I actually have some user memory stuff. This is just from previously, right? So what you can do is you can write anything here. So one thing I do recommend all people write at the very beginning, I'm just gonna go on a different uh, thing because it's kind of hard to use. Let me just go on project memory. So project memory is empty. I would put this in user memory personally, but I'm just putting it in project memory as an example, right? So what I recommend you put here is when, so when doing a task spin up sub agents and try to retain your context um, as an orchestrator, giving small jobs to sub agents, not too much at a time, right? And then you can just do, I'm on Mac, so I have to do shift colon. Okay, so you have to do control C first. I really hate Vim. Um, I can't give you much advice on this. It's much easier on Windows. So I have to do semicolon and WA to write it. Really, really not user-friendly at all. And then QA to quit. And now if you do memory again, I should have a project memory saved. Beautiful, so you saw that that worked. Okay, so what that does is if I give a task to Claude code, like make me a website, right? Hopefully it will pop up with sub agents, right? It'll say, I will now deploy a sub agent. Okay, so what it does is I had to actually instruct this because of the difference between project and user memory. If you put this in user memory, it won't do that, okay? And it will just spawn a sub agent. So you can see what it's doing now is instead of, if I just show you what happened, I just had to basically tell it, it's just an example, read your memory, blah, blah, blah. You can see that the conversation is going downwards, right? This is context being used by Claude code. However, what this is, you can see it's no longer going down, right? It's, it's stationary in terms of I can't scroll anymore. This is using a different context window, not the same context window as the overall Claude code conversation, which means that you can do entire builds within one single conversation with Claude code by using sub agents. I'm just saying, so you know, you can press control O at any point to see what the sub agent is doing and what the prompt that it was given was, right? So you can actually read here and let's say you asked it to do something specific and it didn't include that inside here. You can actually press escape and say, please remember to tell the sub agent to do this, right? And then you tell it what to do. 
that is the real power of sub agents right there. I really highly recommend that you do use sub agents, but just generally, if you want to change anything about how Claude code works, you do slash memory and edit the user prompt. Another thing that we have to talk about is slash compact. Eventually, even if you use sub agents, it will run out of context. If you don't know, all Claude models have uh, 200,000 tokens per like brain per conversation, right? Eventually this will run out and you will have to run slash compact. However, this used to be something that we were talking about for much longer, but because if you press shift tab and put plan mode on, you can plan out an entire project. And then when it's slash compact, it retains that memory because of the plan that was generated by Claude. So one of the main things that you need to know is plan mode. This is unbelievably powerful, especially for new users who might not know what they're doing. Claude will ask clarifying questions and make sure it's actually building you something real and not something completely made up. So for plan mode, if I say, please plan the website first, right? Because I told it to um, just make me a website with no other information. Don't do that, by the way. That's a very, very bad prompt. Please plan the website first. What this is going to do is it's going to generate an entire plan and it'll actually put the plan inside a directory called .claude slash plans. Obviously, this is not a particularly complicated task that I've given it, so it doesn't have to worry too much about plan mode. But generally speaking, if you're doing a big implementation, you want it to plan and create a .md file first. If you see this, you know that it's actually made it. Right. You can do slash plan as well to actually see what the plan, the current plan is. And you can technically also add to the plan, right? Um, I'm not going to do that because it's, um, it, it's on Vim and it's really hard on Mac. If I was on Windows, I would show you, but I actually would recommend doing it like this instead, where you search for the MD file on your Mac, right? It hasn't shown up. But you can find it. It's not that difficult to find. You can do this, for example. Search for it like that, double click, and then look for this one. So it's distri distributed kindling bear. Oh, Badger, was it Badger? Yep. Yeah. So double click this, open it on Visual Studio Code or wherever, and you can actually change the plan here. So this is the plan it's currently following. So let's say it forgot something or whatever, like my brand color is, and then uh, hex code. Yeah, there we go for example, right? And then we save that and it will use this color throughout the entire website, right? So that's extremely important to know that you can actually jump in, change the plans as well. The really cool thing is that when you run, when you run slash compact, the plan is transferred to the next version or next Claude code that you're actually talking to. This is extremely important information, guys. You need to know this to be able to build properly. I would say sub agents, planning and compact, uh, compacting are the three most important things that you need to learn about Claude code. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. This is basically just an introduction to Claude code. The next video in the course, we're going to actually build a very simple website. And then after that, we're going to make more complicated things all the way up to being an absolute pro. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you are watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you all in the next one with some more content. Peace out.